Hey, welcome to this video. So in this video, we're going to talk about unit testing your view model. I'm also going to talk about one of the main issues you might face when you are writing unit tests for your view model. So here we have a simple e-commerce application where I'm going to use it to demonstrate these concepts that I'm going to explain here. And you can find the repository for this project in the description of the video. So let's do it. So this is the view model that we want to write the unit test for. So it's a very simple view model. The only thing that it's doing is fetching data from a repository, product repository. So we show a loading state, we fetch the data, and then we show a content state. So the easiest way to create a unit test for a view model is to click on the class name and then option enter on macOS and then you see the option create test. And then already gives a name for you and then it's very easy to create the test. Okay, so the first thing we gonna, we're going to do is to create the target of this test, which is the view model itself. So, so let's create the instance of this view model. And this view model also needs some dependencies. So in this case, we're going to need a product repository. It is a good practice that you don't pass the real implementation of, uh, of your dependency, because if your test fails, you want to make sure that they are failing because of the view model and not because of your, of your dependencies. And therefore, I like to use a library to mock those dependencies. There are two libraries that are very well known, which is Mokito and mock K as in mock Kotlin. So I'm just going to create a repository and then I'm going to do mock K. Um, very nice. So now I can write my first a simple test. So let's call this test when fetching products content state is shown. So I want to verify that whenever I uh, fetch my products, I end up showing the content state. So that's what I'm trying to do. So I'm going to need to call the view module load product. And here I should pass some ID. I'm just going to pass a uh, any ID because this is a test and then I want to I want to assert that uh, view model dot view state dot value is content so very simple test I'm uh, calling this load product this is going to launch a coroutine is going to uh, show the loading state is going to call this method get product details and then is going to show a content so I want to verify that I'm showing the content after this uh, function is executed so the first thing I have to do is I have to mock the response the response for get product details so here in the mock is very easy to do it you can use the co uh, every and with that, you can easily mock the response of a, a suspend function. So in this case is get product details. And I'm going to use any here, which means for any parameter that was passed to the product detail, then returns another mock object, because I don't really care with the return type at this moment. So uh, very simple. I'm I'm mocking the results here and I want to verify that content was shown. So let's run and see what happens. Okay, so we got an error. If you take a look in the error, you're going to see that it tries to call this get main loop looper and this looper was not mocked. So um, what that means is that it tried to access the main thread of Android, but since the unit test doesn't have access to the Android APIs, doesn't have access to the main thread, fragments, activity, context, it doesn't have access to it. That's why unit tests are so fast because they don't need 
they don't load all the Android dependencies. And because they don't have access to the Android dependencies, they don't have access to the main thread. And if we take a look in this, um, in this method, we are launching coroutine, which is going to use the main thread, the view model scope. And we are also trying to post a value in our live data. So that is also going to try to access the main thread. So that is not going to work. So this is one of the problems that you might face when you're writing unit tests for your view mode. So let's try to fix it. By the time that I'm recording it, there uh, one way to fix it is to use these rules. So there is one rule that is, that is called instant task executor. And there is also a standard test dispatcher. So your coroutines can use this dispatcher. And the way that we can fix it is that we can create a uh, setup function. And in this setup function, we're going to say that dispatchers set main, and then I use my test dispatcher. So what I'm doing here, I'm telling, uh, I'm telling uh, the coroutines to use these test dispatchers. That's basically what is going on under the hood. And here, is the same, but for the live data. Um, so now let's run and see what happens. Okay, so we got another error and this time is assertion failed. So if we try to debug it, we're going to see that this view model dot view state dot value is actually new at this point. That's why this assertion is failing. And the reason why this is failing is because if you take a look in, into this standard test dispatcher, in the documentation, it's going to tell you that it doesn't execute the tasks. So you have to do it by accessing the scheduler. So what happened, the reason why our test fail, failed was because we called this method, but the tasks, they were not executed by the dispatcher. So what we have to do is in the dispatcher, we have to access the scheduler and then we have to advance until idle. So now that we do it, it is actually going to execute the, the, the tasks and then the value of the live data is going to be, is going to be there basically. And now our test succeeds. So, those are one of the main issues when you're writing unit tests for your view model. You have to remember that your unit tests, they don't have access to the main thread. And since the view model is very often trying to access the main thread, you might have some problems with it. So to try to fix it, you can use uh, this rule and also a standard test dispatcher. So now let's create uh, another test. So now instead of checking if the result is content, I want to check if the loading state was shown before. So when fetching products, loading state is shown before content. So I want to verify that my loading state was shown before the content. And if you try to uh, just verify that here is loading, then, well, of course it's going to fail because the last value is a content. And the live data, it, it is uh, an observable. And if you investigate how an observable works, it doesn't save the previous values. So it only saved the last value. So if you try to verify that the loading was shown, is actually going to fail because the last value of the, this live data was content and not loading. So what, what you have to do is that you have to somehow save all the values that were uh, posted to this live data and then you can compare uh, those values that you saved. So the way that you can do it is by saving in a list. So let's create a variable that is called states and this is going to be a mutable list of product details view state and now I'm going to observe all the changes that happens to my live data so view model dot view state 
observe forever. And here what I'm going to do is I'm going to add all the values that were uh, observed. So now I have all the values and all I have to do is instead of checking the, the live data itself, I can check my values. So here I want to check that the zero is actually loading and that one is content. So, not, so let's run and see if it works. Nice, it works. I always like to see my tests failing as well, just to be sure that they are actually working as expected. So I'm gonna change it and see if it fails. And it fails. So now I'm gonna go back to the previous state, which is a correct one. And I'm gonna run all the tests of my view model. And as you can see, all the tests has passed. And now we have a working unit test for our view model. So the key takeaway here is that you have to remember that unit tests, they don't have access to the Android APIs. So the main thread, for example, is not accessible via unit tests. And that's why you might face some problems while writing unit tests for your view model. If there are other ways to unit test the view model, make sure that you leave in the comments and I'm definitely going to take a look as well. So thanks for watching. If that was useful for you, hit the like button and also subscribe. See you in the next video.